Hey, Christine, how are you? Steve, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to meet you. How's everything been coming along? It's been going well. Um, I am, let's see, I am 10 days away from the November LSAT. So I'm getting ready, kind of doing like the final like preparation steps, but I definitely have like a few questions for you, especially in regards to like how to prepare in these next 10 days to make Yeah, sure. sure. You know, I'm like doing my skill set right, but at the same time, like making sure that I am also in like a good like mental headspace for the exam. Um, when I took it back in August, I noticed like a few errors, I think in just like my planning for the exam that definitely resulted in a score that I wasn't super happy with. Um, I think the first one being I took the exam very like early in the morning since I was like kind of like used to doing that in college. So I took the exam pretty early and I didn't really think ahead in terms of the fact that like the night before I probably wasn't going to get a very good night's sleep because I was pretty nervous to take it. So the day that I took the exam, I was like, I was a bit rushed in the morning. I was feeling like a little tired and, you know, definitely anxious. And then during the exam, I actually had a proctoring issue. Um, I took the exam in, the, uh, in my office. I work in a law firm right now. And so I took it in a room that kind of looks like this. And during actually one of the logic games, it was like right in the middle of when I was diagramming one, um, the proctor just like came through the microphone and just kind of like shouted at me that he couldn't see me anymore. And it threw me off so bad. Um, and I think like I was so, I was like kind of upset that like it interrupted my thought process. I think that that whole section of the exam, it was the second game of the section where that happened. And so it definitely like, it threw me off a little for like the rest of the exam. I was like, I guess I was like a bit like angry that it happened. And of course, um, cause he was like messaging me, but he was also talking to me through the computer, like asking me to like adjust and everything. And like, I had even asked him if he was going to pause the timer while I was making these adjustments and it just, he went quiet and then I got sent to a different proctor and then nothing happened after that. So I'm not really sure how they resolved it, but it definitely threw me off a bit. <laughs> oh my God. This sounds like a terrible experience. I'm very sorry to hear about yeah. <laughs> what you went through. Yeah. And so the score that I ended up with, um, I did end up with a 163 on that exam, but ideally I was looking for a 165 or higher on the exam, especially because my undergrad GPA isn't entirely where I would like it to be. And so um, I started taking your course, actually doing the two month study plan. And so I've been doing that and it's been working like amazing for me. I've seen like a pretty much about like a five to seven point increase from all my practice exams. But I just wanted to see um, what your tips or strategies would be for someone who's like this close to exam day and how I should be reviewing, like potentially like how many practice tests I should be doing. Because one issue that I have been noticing with my studying, um, I do work full time in a law firm as a clerk. I do trust and estate planning. And so um, I think balancing like my work life and then also doing the studying, I did kind of hit a burnout period, I would say. Um, this past weekend, I was doing some of my practice exams and I was making silly mistakes, like as silly as misreading one of the rules for a logic game. So I wanted to see like what your thoughts were kind of on like how to prep and then also having like a bit of burnout, like how I should spread it out to where I get kind of like re-energized and not make those silly mistakes. Come Absolutely. Sure. And we can definitely cover all of that before we get into that though. One big looming thing is how can we avoid a proctoring experience like what you previously had right. going into November? Because I'm sure that's on your mind because yeah, given, given how poorly that went and given how just incompetent that particular proctor was, yeah, there's nothing you can do to guarantee 100% that the proctor won't interrupt you. Mm -hmm. But at the very outset of the exam before it even begins, mm -hmm. I would recommend emphasizing to them Hey, listen, if you have to interrupt me for any reason during the section, whether it's audio or in the chat, can you please pause the clock? Right. And then you could remind them again during the break, just to make sure that you're doing everything that you can, because some of them don't realize how strictly timed this exam is or how right. important it is. They're proctoring tons of other exams. So they're not like LSAT exam specialists or anything. So right. 
that's the biggest thing I would recommend at the start going in. Okay. Yeah. And I'm also going to be using a different office um, within my office. So um, I was actually thinking of using this one because I have like the building behind me and it blocks like the sunlight glare. So I was actually considering this office instead. So hopefully I can at least eliminate that issue. But yeah, but that's yeah. definitely a good point. Yeah, and make sure that yes, you, know, you eliminate glare, make mm -hmm. sure that you're centered in the camera, that it, the camera's at a good height for them. And you could confirm right. all of that with them as well before it starts to, if you shift a little bit left or right, like it's not going to, it's not going to make them concerned that they can't see you or anything. So that's the biggest thing I want to just make sure that I recommend to you regarding the prep schedule for the final 10 days. Mm -hmm. It really is about taking full length practice tests okay. and reviewing them in depth. So with 10 days, I would suggest maybe doing two or three. Okay. I don't think that you need to do more than that. Okay. I certainly wouldn't recommend every day. And mm -hmm. in order for you to have adequate time to review them in depth, mm -hmm. considering that you're working full time, I think two to three is the most I'd recommend. Okay. Yeah. And I did also take some time off um, next week from work just to have time to like, you know, do bowling practice tests, but then also like have some time to like sort of recharge and relax. So I, I definitely think that'll help compared to like the strategy that I had with the LSAT last time. Because the last time I took the exam, even the day before the exam, I had taken a practice test. And I think that was a mistake also on my part because I did feel a little bit of burnout, like come actual test day. Exactly. Yeah. You want to walk in feeling refreshed and ready to go. So mm -hmm. I would recommend that you not do anything at all the mm -hmm. day before and that okay. you take your last practice test a couple of days prior. So okay. you have time to review it in depth and feel complete on whatever might have given you trouble on that exam. Because the point of these is not to learn something new. At this point, you right. generally know it or you don't. It's just about resolving any lingering questions and right. going and feeling strong with good practice test results in those final weeks. Okay. And then um, in terms of like certain questions that I notice I still sometimes struggle with or take a little longer with, um, it's specifically for logical reasoning, the parallel reasoning questions those always seem to take me extra time and I do get them wrong like more often than like the rest of the question types in logical reasoning. And I think, um, I think it's mainly just because when I'm going through every single answer to me, like, cause obviously in some way they're usually sometimes like correct in like specific ways. And so I think when I usually get to maybe like choice D, I kind of forget like what I had you know, inferred from like A, B, and C. And so sometimes like I have to like go over them again or I just end up marking the wrong answer. So I wanted to see what your thoughts were on like reviewing that particular question type specifically before exam day. And also I haven't really practiced like the strategy of just skipping certain questions out of the section. So I wanted to see what your thoughts were on that as well. Yeah, sure. So regarding the parallel reasoning questions, mm -hmm. It's really important to form an abstracted idea of the method of reasoning in the stimulus. So extracting a general principle mm -hmm. and then holding that general principle in your mind mm -hmm. as you're scanning through the choices. Okay. So just ask yourself as you go through A, B, C, and so on, is this in line with the general principle? Mm -hmm. Is it that I had in mind? Is it matching the degree of certainty mm -hmm. in the stimulus? Is it matching the category of things they're discussing. So all people, most people, some people, some people who X, Y, Z, and they're further qualifying it, whatever that range is, you want to make sure that it's matching as closely as possible. Okay. And then for these questions, because I typically haven't been diagramming any questions for logical reasoning, but would you say that parallel reasoning is a question that could benefit from a quick diagram? Sometimes it depends on how it's structured. If it's structured okay. in a very formal logic way, uh -huh. meaning lots of conditional statements, mm -hmm. very tightly written, then it might be valuable. Okay. But there are plenty of cases where these are more informal logic, where diagramming isn't going to necessarily reveal a whole lot, mm -hmm. in which case I wouldn't. So it's a case by case kind of thing. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I definitely want to like spend a bit more time with those. And then um, another question type, I guess, that sometimes like catches me by surprise when doing my practice tests are, I guess, like the logic games that are more um, I'm not entirely sure what you would call these ones, but they're, I think it's the question types that get asked on that very like initial question, instead of being 
a sequencing question, just like, you know, a basic one. It's one that asks um, more like a conditional question. So I think those logic games like throw me off a bit. I think a good example would be um, the mulch game. I watched one of your videos for that one, but I think it, games similar to those. And then there was also one of the games uh, I think it was maybe in prep test 70 where it was like J can't be passed on to K, K can't be passed on to L. So I think like those sort of games that aren't like the traditional, you know, like ordering and grouping kind of games. Um, would you recommend like reviewing some of those more in depth, like maybe even ones that I've already done and maybe like rewatching one of your videos on them or just kind of like retracing like my diagram and thought process steps for those kind of games? Sure. So, I mean, it's definitely worth reviewing the video explanations in the course for any logic game that gives you trouble. Mm -hmm. The Molten Stones game is actually quite different from the game where we're passing from J to K to mm -hmm. L to M. Those right. are two radically different types. The Molten Stones game is actually one that can be broken into a couple of major main diagrams. Right, right. So that one... Four for that one, yeah. Right, right. So that one's actually pretty tightly structured. Mm -hmm. However, the cleanings idea is a bit of a curveball concept. Mm -hmm. A lot of ordering games do not have anything like that. And so that might be initially troubling. Okay. So I'd recommend reviewing the video, watching how I break it down and how I generally approach it in terms of laying out the major possibilities. Okay. But that game type is a bit more standard, I would say, than one like a pattern sort of game where we're right. passing from one variable to another but there's no ordering element. There is not really a grouping element. Those kinds of games, I would say, fall more towards what I would call a curveball scenario okay. where it does not neatly fit the mold. And right. for someone who feels fairly proficient in the basic game types, mm -hmm. the curveballs are where I would focus in these final days. And I have a big list of them in the course. Let me know if you can't right. find it. And so I would just practice those getting, practice getting put into these unfamiliar scenarios mm -hmm. that can be initially intimidating. And then seeing how actually these games are susceptible to the same underlying strategies that any game is. Right. Okay. You also asked earlier about uh, flagging or skipping logical reasoning questions. And I wanted yeah. to make sure we touch on that as well. So parallel questions are actually one of the types that I might be more likely to skip, especially if it appears relatively later in the section when it's likely to be a more difficult method of reasoning. So mm -hmm. As you're taking these last couple of practice tests, you might want to try out the approach of, hey, if I'm at question 15 or above, mm -hmm. and this question just looks scary and I don't want to deal with it, mm -hmm. I'll make that one of the three or four that I flag, skip, mm -hmm. and come back to later. Okay. Okay, yeah, I will definitely try that in my next few practice tests coming cool. up. Cool. Yeah, it's and a pacing kind of thing just to avoid getting bogged down. Right, right. And then just the last thing that I wanted to touch on was like, what were your recommendations for the day before exam day? I've kind of heard like two sides of it, like doing, you know, like review of like questions you've already done just to kind of like keep your mind refreshed. And then I've also heard that it's good to not do anything the day before exam day. So what do you recommend? Yeah, Especially I'd recommend test anxiety. Yeah, I'd recommend more in the latter category uh -huh. to do as to do nothing as if possible, ideally. Okay. If it will give you anxiety to do nothing, then in that case, <laughs> I'm okay with you doing a little bit of light review or watching a course video or something, but nothing too much. And you might also benefit from spending more time on relaxation to help reduce the anxiety. So a hot bath, meditation, time mm -hmm. in the park, weather permitting, stuff like that, whatever okay. you find to be personally relaxing. I okay. would just aim to structure your ideal day of relaxation okay. and then be totally indulgent in taking advantage of that day. Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for those tips. Yeah, of course. Sure. What else? Um, I think the last thing that I was really like curious about was, um, especially with like reading comprehension, I've noticed that with the, um, I'm totally blanking on what they're called, um, where it's like passage A and passage B. Right, the comparative or dual passages. Yeah, the comparative, yeah, comparative readings, those ones. So I noticed that, especially with those, like I'm going back to the text pretty often looking at them. So I was wondering, like, is it potentially like maybe I'm not reading like in depth for 
those passages, but I've noticed like with passage B, I'm definitely like retaining everything. But then with A, I get thrown off a bit and I'm always, I'm noticing that I'm referring back to it a lot and I keep having to go back to it and it takes more time, especially for the comparative readings. I personally think referring back is totally fine. This mm -hmm. is a lot of dense information being thrown at you very quickly under stressful conditions. And so I don't see any problem with going back mm -hmm. as long as you can quickly find what you need to find. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, Christine. Well, I'm wishing you all the best in these final days. If you need anything at all, just reach out. I'll be glad to help. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, your course has been very helpful. Like seeing the score increase was definitely like my motivating factor to keep going. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.